It's time for our favorite snap judgments game. Welcome into the horseshoe. Ohio State wins 37-17 over Maryland. Unbeaten Maryland. And sometimes it's called... Now beaten Maryland. Now beaten. Well, they were unbeaten. They were dominant. They were incredible. Snap judgments, of course, is brought to you by Byers Auto. And it's choose your own adventure. Are you A, going to nitpick? Be very unhappy about a first half that was clearly not to Ohio State's full potential on offense. B, thrilled with the resilience. Loving the way that the defense responded. The big plays from Josh Proctor. The fact that the offense kicked into gear. C, who cares? That's another Big Ten win. Definitely not C. Okay. Um, somewhere between A and B. I think this game, you know, in the pregame key show we talked and I said the one thing I was really worried about was just the team coming out flat and having a little bit of a Notre Dame hangover. No matter how much they say they won't have it, I think it's human nature to have it. The day feels a little bit like, mer eh. it's like meh out here. It's kind of meh. And then like you get that first quarter and it's everything that you, every worst fear you have about the Ohio State team this year being proven right. Uh, there's Their pass rush is non-existent. They're giving up third downs on defense. The offense looks clueless. The quarterback is holding the ball for too long, getting sacked. Maryland's dropping eight and the Buckeyes can't run into it. They're not throwing into it. And it just looked like a team that didn't really have a sense of what they were doing. A bunch of penalties, a lot of things to clean up. And then the second half happens, and then you can look at it and say, okay, well, it's a 20-point win against what I believe <clears throat> is probably the fourth best team in the Big Ten. So yeah, I'm trying to couch it from that perspective. Sure. My brother, who he'll watch this eventually, so I'm going to be careful what I say. He's not always the smartest person I know, but he's one of the smartest people I know. Said in a message to myself and my other brothers last night, Ohio State's favored by 20. Are you, as a fan, most happy with a 20 to nothing win, a 40 to 20 win, or a 50 to 30 win? And I don't know what the right answer is, but I think- Any of them, yeah, you take any of them. You should be, right? But I don't, I don't. most Buckeyes fans are so used to everything being perfect and being the highest scoring offense in college football and all of the things that, that we've watched Ohio State be in the last six, seven years. And so now when they just look human at times it feels incredibly frustrating that first half was bad football by ohio state but yet because they were playing a team that is decidedly less talented than them and again maryland may be the fourth best team in the big 10 but the gap between one two and three and four is huge but because they're playing the team that is not in that top three in the league it's 10 10 at half and so you go into half feeling like hey this isn't a big deal but if you're watching it on the field in the first half there's no way to not say, wow, this is a big deal. This team did not look prepared, mentally prepared, emotionally prepared. They didn't seem to have a game plan of what they were going to do and kind of let Maryland dictate terms, which is not what I would have expected. So we've had this conversation and I mentioned to you, I mentioned it to Bill. It's like, I felt like last season, my coverage of the team suffered because I was dwelling too much on the negatives yep. of Ohio State. And I I'm, I'm, don't want to fall into that trap. I do think that there are a lot of areas that Ohio State can improve. Ryan Day rattled off a few of them and said that they can still play a lot better upstairs in that post-game press conference. Like He is right about that. I, I completely agree. And we can go through, and we will over the next week, the things that they can continue to improve at. If they're going to beat Penn State in two weeks, if they're going to win uh, in the game in November, if they're going to get to a, a college football playoff, there are things that they're going to have to do better. But this is also like a differently constructed team. And I think that adjusting the expectations to your brother's point, like which one of those is best? I, whatever is needed on a given Saturday. Like, it, it, to me, I think it's doing a disservice. And I did this too much last year and I don't want to do it again. If you beat a Big Ten opponent, one that was 5-0 and uh, by 20 points, and yes, you were pushed for a half, but not every game is supposed to be as easy as uh, as they've been as as yeah like I you mean, look at the, the games league that, is getting better that helps yeah. like it, you should sometimes have to push yourself to win these games that's a sign of strength in the big 10 and it's a sign of a good program if you're able to do that uh by no means does that suggest that ohio state the way that it played today is a completely finished product but what else what else are you supposed to do like yeah maryland played a very good game uh, they had a good game plan talia tongavello made a handful of plays that stressed them Ohio State was also able to force him out of his comfort zone and get the two interceptions that I, I thought that they might be able to if you can bring the pass rush, coordinated pass rush, defensive line and secondary, working as a unit. They did that. There, yeah. all, there's, looking at all the negatives would ignore that there were a ton of positives for Ohio State in this yeah. game, and that's, that's where I'm at. In the second half. 
I think there were still things in the positive in the first I, half. Like I, Josh Proctor's yeah. pick six well, was in the yeah, first that, half. That clearly changed. There's two plays that Josh Proctor made to change this game, in my opinion. The pick six, obviously, to change it from Maryland, you know, having momentum and it being 10-7. And then when Maryland scores in the f- first drive of the second half, Ohio State answers. That next kickoff, Josh Proctor hit a dude so hard that he almost knocked himself out. Right. And then all of a sudden, everyone else started hitting dudes hard. We saw Denzel Burke light someone up, and the momentum completely changed from that point. Um, yeah, and you, there are positives in the first half, certainly. Josh Proctor's play, Sonny Styles' play, the way uh, JT Tumaloa was, was making impacts, uh, but everything ramped up in the second half. And I just think that most people are going to look at this and say, why do you need to wait to the second half? And the point is, they're not trying to wait till the second half. Maryland's a four, they were 5-0 and heading into this game. They are the fourth best team in the Big Ten. They are a top 30 program in the country right now, probably. And you're going to play games that feel a little bit uncomfortable. That doesn't mean that this is what Ohio State wants to be. I think the frustration that some folks may have is that you come off of that big Notre Dame win and then you expect them to just launch into like, okay, now we're going to play our best football. But but there's not really a reasonable expectation of that. I mean, they beat Notre Dame by one inch on, on the last play of the game. It's not like uh, that, I mean, that can launch you into a different stratosphere emotionally and like, hey, we're tough, we're resilient. And they showed that again today, but physically, but uh, execution wise there's a lot of things to fix and so, most of that to my opinion starts on special teams penalties all over the field like uh, those including are things, on the head coach yeah i mean I've, things i haven't seen i'm not sure exactly what happened there i was unable to see it did he just run into the official yeah he, the official he, he, he the has head? a tendency to venture out on the sideline hmm. and it's not the first time this season we've even seen that from ohio state yeah. it's the second time hmm. they've been penalized for that this year the first time for Ryan Day specifically. But this one was a 15 yarder, it's not 15. a five yarder, because he were, I think he made contact with the, or the official. I think made contact with him. Yeah, well, but whatever. I mean, I can understand his frustration because the officiating in Big Ten and uh, Ohio State games specifically has been quite bad. Let's uh, run through some of the quick news items before we get into a little bit more analysis and some players of the game on staff judgments. Brought to you by Buyers Auto. Travion Henderson. Uh, we mentioned it or alluded to it in the pregame keys. He was dealing with an upper body injury. If this had been the Penn State game, you can bet that Travion Henderson would have played. Ohio State did not want to push push it. It was a situation where he could have re-injured it or made it, aggravated it, made it worse if he played. They wanted to take the safe route. It's a long season, and given what Travion Henderson went through a year ago with his foot, I think that the cautious play was correct. And that's so. an injury that happened against Notre Dame for people wondering, like, when did this occur? It, it happened at Notre Dame and towards the end of the game, and then he continued to play with it. But Yes, uh, but they did not want to risk that, so to be clear, it is an injury, but Travion Henderson is expected to return next week at Purdue. Number two, Emeka Ibuka. Uh, they're going to evaluate that. It looks like he may have dodged a, a worst-case scenario long-term injury. He was trying to hobble to the sideline. It was an awkward sort of landing on his knee. Uh, you know, The coaching staff, the training staff told him, get down, like, and he had to be helped to the medical tent, did not return to the game. Uh, he was limping pretty heavily when I saw him uh, heading down there for Carmen, Ohio. Uh, I, I guess it was suggested that it may be a bruise on the knee. Uh, we'll see how that transpires. It's another week to look at a wide receiver injury. The third one, of course, being Marvin Harrison Jr., who Kyle McCord said afterwards, his good enough is better than almost anybody else in the country. I'm paraphrasing. He didn't say that word for word, uh, but I think that's what he meant. So those are the, the three biggies there yeah. uh, for Ohio State on the injury front. You monitor that moving forward. Uh, those are the newsy items. You would think if there's any potential concern for Emeka Buka, they'll just shelf him for next week against Purdue and, and let the offense run without him. I think the wide receiver, you have guys that can play. Xavier Johnson can play a lot of what Emeka Ibuka mm-hmm. does. Um, I think that the Marvin Harrison and uh, Kyle McCord connection received a vital bit of data today, which is when in doubt, throw the freaking ball to Marvin Harrison because either a penalty is coming or a catch is coming. Is and that but is that a Kyle McCord and Marvin Harrison thing or a Ryan Day thing? I think it's no, I think it's a Kyle McCord. Okay. Thing. I really do. I think that and again, I, I, we were talking about it in Slack in the first half. I thought Kyle McCord was very reluctant to throw the ball in the first half. And that's because Maryland was dropping eight. And then in the second half, Maryland was loading the box with eight. And so Ohio State was like, oh, now we can throw. Yeah, and they said thank you. It was very strange. <laughs> Maryland's game plan was working, and then they completely scrapped it. Yeah. So that was odd. <laughs> they thought Ohio State was going to adjust to that, and they were just like, yeah. no, thank you. Now we can run yeah. the original game plan. Neat. Um, <laughs> so that was weird. But, like, you see Marvin. Mike Laxley. You see Marv as a guy who's just going to make a play one way or the other. That catch that he made on the sideline is absolutely absurd. So was the throw. Uh, so was the throw. And, you know, 
Kyle had a couple deep shots, one to Julian Fleming that got caught up in the wind, and one to Marvin Harrison in the first half. He threw it 56 yards or something like yeah. that. I don't, you know, I don't know how much further he could have thrown it. If he could have thrown it 65, it's a touchdown yeah. because Marv was so wide open. But you're, you're dealing with a team that is trying to figure itself out, and I, I the run game, that's a concern. Like let's, we can't gloss over the concerns. That is a concern. If you're averaging 3.1 yards a carry for Chip Trainum against Maryland when they did drop eight in the first half and you're not able to get anything going, Mayan Williams um, came in and delivered a couple blows, but he was still under four yards a carry. So there's a concern for me with the offensive line. Pass protection, I think the sacks in the first half, I, I'm going to put those almost on Kyle McCord and not the pass, uh, pass blocking. It wasn't because great today, though. It wasn't great. Either way, but I'm, I'm my personal read on sure. the field. This is why we do the rewatch on Mondays because yep. I'll get a chance to give a further uh, look into it. But I think it was just McCord holding onto the ball too long. Maybe that's just not seeing what he liked uh, in front of him. But mm -hmm. I also think the Buckeyes have an opportunity to just when you see that happening, let's put more receivers out there because you know the, the third and short play where they get stopped uh, in in the red zone the first time, like you, you're taking Marvin Harrison off the off the field, like. Yeah. Don't take him off the field. Just spent two weeks talking about short yardage and red zone offense, and they're like, watch this. Yeah. Like, it's going to be different, but it's not going to be better. Yeah. Uh, that was weird. Um, defensively, uh, safety driven defense, you can hammer that uh, and take a bunch of drinks for those three guys. Holy cow, Josh Proctor, Lathan Ransom with the picks, and Sonny Styles with a massive uh, third down stop uh, later on in the game. Uh, that stuff seems pretty obvious to me. Something that doesn't necessarily show up in the box score that I think has to be taken as a strong lesson and strong consideration moving forward for Ohio State is that Caden Curry, good things happen when he is on the field for Ohio State. I don't think it's a coincidence. I'm trying to couch what I say because I'm not sure what his responsibility is or how it's different than other guys. When Jack Sawyer has been on the field opposite JT Tuomaloa, the pass rush is worse. When Kenyatta Jackson was on the field today, when Caden Curry was on the field today, somehow JT Tumaloa's pass rush was better uh, opposite. Maybe it just happened to be that those are true pass rush situations because there was, uh, Maryland had a third and short where Jack Sawyer was lined up almost in like a wide nine and his job, I, I looked through my camera again to make sure and he's there in a read position. So I don't know how much of it is on Jack being mm -hmm. given a different assignment. Um, I don't know how much of it is, you know, if you put it in Caden, you said just go cause cause chaos, rock like Amadeus. Um, but I think that, you know, Ohio State saw today the value of chaos. Like if you just force uh, Talia to move out, move around, like, yeah, maybe he'll break a play. Maybe he'll run, scramble for 12 yards. But like that's when he's going to make mistakes. He's a, a comes from a pretty good for quarterback family, apparently, I just found that out. He has a brother who plays for the in the NFL. Who? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, his his brother is the Dolphins starting quarterback. You're kidding me? No. So, like, you know, he's going to know what to do in the pocket. You've got to find ways to get him uh, uncomfortable, and that matters down the road because that's what you're going to face when you're facing JJ McCarthy in Ann Arbor. As someone who, if you don't put pressure on him, he is going to pick you apart. And the Buckeyes allowed Talia to do that in the first half, first quarter. And then they stopped it. I mean, Kyle McCord threw for 130 more yards than he did. And Kyle had a minus 20 yard pass. That wasn't, uh, that was one of the weirder plays that I've seen in a while. You don't see a lot of uh, losses of 18. And then the fact, then Ohio State took a five yard penalty for delay of game after that. And they're like, second and 33. Hey, there's an alien running down the sideline. Throw it to the alien. Let's throw it to the alien. That was a, that was a the pretty good idea. The one legged alien. <laughs> he's, uh, he's quite good at football. Uh, normally, we've been skipping over special teams entirely, but Burn, we cannot do that today. Uh, no, uh, and I think that this is just one of those weeks where we have to petition people to change the name because it's not special. It's bad teams. That was a bad team. It was suboptimal teams. There, there were, it, it's not, you can mistake, you can excuse like a block in the back on a, on a big return, people getting too hyped up. These are just boneheaded things that are going on. Number one, a bad snap on the on the punt. I don't know what happened there because if that's not a fake punt, which Ryan Day said it was not a fake punt, how does a long snap go three yards to the up back? Did, um, it, did it spin funny? Like it almost seems impossible for a snap to be that bad on a punt. How does the same team keep making the same blunder with snaps three times in eight games? I've never, if, if that was not a fake punt, which you have no reason to doubt Ryan Day saying it wasn't, there is almost no world in which the long snappers snap should go three yards to his left 
and only go three yards in the air. So yeah. look at this. This has been crazy out here. We are getting drilled just with a trash avalanche. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. It's like we're being prepared. Yeah. Look at this. We're being for Purdue. Prepared. Purdue's weather is actually here right now. It's the, we're so but it's dangerous out here. And this has nothing to do with special teams. Let's be clear. You get a, a hold on a fair catch. <laughs> You get a five men in the backfield illegal formation on a punt that you give up a 26 yard return on. You get, a, it just, it's just confusing. Ohio State is one of very few teams in the country that has a full-time special teams coach. And for it to continue to be this erratic and, and today straight up bad, that is, that is vexing. All right, there I go again uh, down that negative path. But let's be positive. Don't want to be there. 20 Cade's, point win. Cade Stover, uh, touchdown. Uh, really ske well schemed up. He finished it off. He'd been so close to having that breakthrough. He gets it. Uh, he felt good and or almost smiled in the post-game yeah, locker room, almost. which uh, we're really close to that. Uh, Josh Proctor, big smile. Uh, his family was waiting for him uh, as he left the, the stadium here today. They've been said they joked. Uh, you can see that on the notebook uh, later on. Like long time coming, six years. Those are cool stories. They should be celebrated. It was a massive play in the game for Ohio State. Isn't it kind of funny? I don't mean to jump in, but like you should. There are guys on this team who, if you ask the average fan, I think a year ago, like, who are you rooting for? Who's your guy? Who's your Buckeye? <laughs> like a year ago, if you would have told people it's Denzel Burke and Josh Proctor, they would have told you to F right off. <laughs> you know? But now these are the dudes that are like, they're, they're laying it all on the line and you see it and it, it's awesome. Cody Simon getting a huge fourth down stop. Like there's yeah. a, there's a guys on this team that are, you know, we trying to balance. Okay, good and bad. Another eh, game for Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers. I'm not entirely sure if they're just, their eye discipline is, is off because it seems like anytime there's misdirection, those guys are going the wrong, the wrong way. So um, Cody Simon played well in, in some, some mop-up duty for, for Steel Chambers when Steel was, seemed like he got kind of asked to yep, take a break. Take, take a break. Um, and so you're seeing these other guys get a chance to fill in. Uh, second, second quarter, Buckeyes tied up at 10. And then the, immediately it's Jaden McKenzie and Ty Hamilton on the field for the first series. So they gave up the first down, but it, what, they did their job. The Buckeyes got off the field with a, a pun after that, and so after those guys left the field, yeah. But you know, it, it is you have to. We have to see rotation. There, there needs to be some depth playing. Tyreek Williams on the Lathan Ransom interception seemed to re-aggravate himself. He he was not celebrating with the team. He was yep. angrily stomping about that he had apparently uh, tweaked his his knee again or something. So like, it's vital to get those guys some reps, but. You know, at that point in the game, maybe it's not when you want to. I don't know. Yeah, and I think that that's it's worth a reminder. I mean, Tyreek Williams himself said uh, a week or two ago, like, "What do you mean back healthy? Like, he yeah. still wasn't fully healthy on that knee." Which, again, like, it, it's eye opening how well he's playing. But there were a lot of guys that did that because you can't beat a team that comes in five and zero in the Big Ten uh, without a good effort from across the board. And Ohio State did that. They beat Mike Loxley in Maryland, thirty-seven to seventeen, in here next week. Uh, on the road at Purdue. So there will be some snap, snap judgments there as well. We appreciate you joining us. However, if you caught it live or if you're catching it later, either way, we thank you for watching it on the podcast. Snap judgments are brought to you by Byers Auto. He is Berm. I am Austin. We will talk to you later.